Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Robbie the Painter. It's good to see some of you coming back. There's Michael, and there's Sherry, and there's Dave, and Christy. Thank you guys for all the support. I appreciate it. All, all the new subscribers, um, thank you very much. Um, today's painting, we do a lot of time lapse. Um, I do a lot of time lapse on my channel to shorten the videos so you guys don't have to sit through an hour. I've got a couple episodes that are almost an hour long and uh, not very many views on them. And what I'd like to do is not do time lapse today and teach you how to paint in oils and, and, and take each section of the painting and, uh, and show you how we get through it. So um, remember, with our style of painting, we're gonna do background, middle ground, foreground. And the reason for that is, and traditional painters will, will uh, do something different. You don't have to do the background, the middle ground, the foreground. You can, uh, some traditional painters, people that went to school and art classes and stuff like that may do a portrait of somebody and they may start with the face and the hair and then they'll jump to the background and then they'll come up to the clothing in the foreground and they'll jump around for our type of painting what i'm showing you guys 90 percent of it is going to be the farthest thing away first which would be our background then the middle and the foreground in the front back middle front and that's what we're going to do so it's going to be an easy painting. If you've never painted before in oils, this might just be your painting to, to jump in. Um, not going to do anything real fancy or complicated. So let's get started. I'll run the colors across. We're starting with only a few colors because like I said, we're going to do this painting in stages. So this is going to be our background. Uh, and these are the colors we're going to use for the background. So. Let's grab our two inch brush and come into some phthalo blue. And I thought we would do a darker sky. So we're going to come up here with our phthalo blue and start at the top and Oh, that's dark. It's pretty. Phthalo blue is a very pretty color. And I'm just grab some more phthalo blue, just coming up here and adding in some blue here and there. Now, you're probably saying, Rob, you didn't cover the whole thing with blue. Why'd you leave these, the canvas showing? Oh, and we've got a thin coat of liquid white on the canvas. Um, so there's, there's liquid white on the canvas, thin coat of it so our paint blends and moves around. Um, the reason I left these spots, we're gonna put clouds in. So I didn't wanna cover everything up with blue and then try to put the white on and have that fighting against the blue. So I just left a couple spots um, without the blue so we can put some clouds in. Now, we're gonna take our same dirty two inch brush. We're gonna come up here and blend some of this blue. And if we come down into the cloud area, it's okay. As long as we leave a little bit of white showing where our clouds are gonna be. It'll be all right. And if you want to darken your painting up a little more than this, add more phthalo blue. Oh, okay. We're going to come across nice and light. Very easy. Just a whisper. And it just takes out some of the brush strokes 
all that swirling that we're doing and everything, just going across slightly takes those brush strokes out. Okay, let's set that in the odorless paint thinner. We use odorless paint thinner, odorless mineral spirits. Um, that's what we're using here to clean our brush. Let's grab a fan brush. And I've got the, uh, I believe this is number four, number four fan brush. We're gonna come into some titanium white. And we're just gonna swirl our brush, grab some more titanium white, come up here. And grab some more. It's gonna mix a little bit with this blue, but that's okay. We know that's gonna happen. Yeah. Again, I'm making little circles, I'm twisting, I'm turning, all kinds of stuff. There's, there's no right or wrong way to do clouds. So you can use a fan brush, we could grab the two inch brush and do this. Okay. Maybe we'll put a little, little streaker right across here. Okay, with a clean, dry two inch brush, we're gonna use the top corner of the brush. And you've heard me on other episodes where I say we're going to come underneath the, the cloud. And what I'm talking about, if you'll notice the top of this cloud and the, the shape of it, we want to keep that intact. So we're going to come underneath and we're just going to blend. Same over here on this cloud, just blending underneath that top. Down here. Okay. And very lightly, we take our two inch brush and we lift up very lightly. It's gonna create some streaks, that's okay. Let's dry that off with some paper towels real quick. And then we want to come lightly across. Lightly across. And there we go, we have. Now we're going to come down to these other ones and just blend a little bit on that one, blend a little on this one, just Get a hair, just take it off with your brush, lift up very lightly, and then lightly across. Okay, so I've moved the camera back um, so we can see our clouds and we can go to the next step in laying out our background. And we're going to use that same fan brush. Uh, that we use to put the clouds on and we're going to come into a little yellow ochre so And I didn't tell you what brushes we were using but I only have about five or six Laying on my uh, easel here and a couple liner brushes a one-inch brush uh, Two-inch brush and two fan brushes. I think that's all we're going to use. I don't even know if we're going to use the palette knife uh, so we we will see but Come into a little yellow ochre and get, get a medium amount on there. We're going to do some distant hills. 
So, we just start from one side and just going to come up here and go up and down. This is going to be the shape of your hill. Not really a mountain. I guess it could be a distant mountain. But more like a hill. And then we're going to take our fan brush and just pull down. So this side, this side of the hill comes down at an angle. I'm just putting the fan brush up here and following that same line, pulling down that way. This side of our hill goes that way. I'm just pulling down with the fan brush in that direction. Just bringing some color down. That's all we're doing for our hill. Some of this is going to be covered up. Well, we don't, we're not going to worry about it. Just bringing some of this down. Okay. And there we go. And as you come down farther, it's mixing with that liquid white that's on the canvas and it gets lighter. Okay, let's put our fan brush in the odorless paint thinner and let's grab, let's grab our dry two inch brush. Make sure that's dry. Okay. We're going to do the same thing, kind of grab and pull. Now we're going to leave the top of our hill alone. We don't want to mess up that, that nice uh, edge, that nice line in the top of our hill. So we're going to come underneath that, just lightly pull. We're just kind of blending. I'm not pressing very hard. If it sounds like I am, I'm, I'm not really pressing very hard. We're just going to pull that out and just kind of pull that out. Okay. Again, following the lines of your, of your hill. So if it goes down this way, pull the paint out that way. Let's grab one of our liner brushes and we're going to come over to that uh, yellow ochre and just mix a little bit of titanium white to lighten that. What we're looking for is a highlight color for our hill. It's a distant hill. There's not going to be a whole lot of uh, detail that you see, but we are going to see maybe a little, little highlight where the, the sun might be. Where's the sun at? Where's the light coming from? I usually like to pick one side or the other, and I think we're going to go with this right side. We don't see the sun. It, it's probably off over here someplace, off the canvas. We, we can't see it. But we're going to say that that's where it's coming from. Well, if our light is coming from this side, then we're going to highlight this side of our hill, this side of our hill. See what I mean? All right, let's come up here with our lighter color. Just gonna, I'm just grabbing a little of this yellow ochre with the titanium white in it. I'm gonna lighten it up just a little more. Add a little more titanium white. You're not gonna, you're, you're not gonna see a whole lot of this, but Hopefully, when I stand back, and I'm concentrating on this right side, if, if, again, our light source is on this side. This would be the light side. All right. What? Could go into straight, let's go into straight titanium white. See how that, see what this looks like when it blends. Grab some more titanium white. We're just gonna put a couple highlights. I don't wanna spend a whole lot of time on, on this. Just wanna show you how, put a simple hill and how we can highlight it.
sun's hitting this over here on this side. And we stand back and we look. And when you stand back, I always tell you guys, stand back and look. When you're right up against the painting, it's hard to see what you need or what you don't need. So I say stand back and look. And when I stand back, I like what I'm doing, but I think I need a little more highlight right here. Bring this down. Something right in here. Does kind of look maybe a little more like a mountain, not a hill, but you know what? Let's just call it a hill. Maybe the sun is hitting. Maybe this this one comes down this direction. I'm going into straight titanium white. Just making a little squigglies. Not really being precise. All right, that looks good. Grab some more titanium white. Maybe there's a little, just a little on this peak. Grab some more. I'm getting quite a bit of titanium white. And if you get, I just put a big, big glob of titanium white there. That's okay. We're going to use it. Now we're going to move it around. Take it. We're just going to bring it down, feather it out, move it this way and that way. My hand is shaking. If you have a little shake in your hand, this is the perfect kind of painting to do. Because then you start doing your squiggly lines and basically that's what I'm doing. I mean, watch this. I just put the paint brush on here and I zigzag across. And it gives you something. It just, you know, it happens on the canvas. And it always makes me smile when I see this stuff just appearing before my eyes. I smile, I'm like, I can't believe that, that it's, that it's happening. But that's what painting does. Puts a smile on your face. Okay, we're gonna come up here to this peak, give him a couple highlights. See how that stands out against that blue sky? That's why I went a little darker um, with the sky. And uh, instead of just putting a little bit of phthalo blue and blending it into the, to the uh, liquid white and making it lighter and lighter and lighter as the sky came down, I kept that phthalo blue dark because light against dark, dark against light, that's when you really see the magic. So there we go, we've got some got some hills. I don't even think I'm going to rinse this uh, liner brush, but I am going to mix up. Got some sap green here, and I've got a little uh, Van Dyke brown. I like this color that I've got of the green, but I'm going to take a little, a little more white right down here and mix up a lighter color and leave, leave that other color of green alone. That'll be our medium green. Right here we've got a light green. All I do for these distant trees, there's no, there's no magic to it. I'm just, just drawing lines. Kind of like a picket fence, but not all the same height. Some are taller, some are shorter.
just drawing lines. Grab a little more of that light color. And you skip a little bit. You don't, you know, leave some, leave some space in between these. Grab some more paint. Run out of paint. Grab some more. I'm just going to put some distant trees. And again, they look like trees from a distance, but all I'm doing is just drawing lines. I'm not even worried about the shape. Sometimes you can just take your brush and lay it against the canvas. Just tap and that will give you a, a shape. So, be careful how much paint you have on your, on your brush. You'll get a little more paint on there than you, than you want, but we can always fix that. Okay. Just add in a few distant trees. Now we are going to take that medium color, little tiny bit of that. We're going to come underneath some of these. And we're going to just put some ground in underneath to hold these trees up. So take that medium color. Just randomly underneath. Leaving the, the tops of these trees alone. We're, we're looking, we're putting this, uh, this ground in at the base of where these trees are. And some of these trees are gonna disappear while I'm doing this because I, I put them in a little lower and, and I'm squiggling right through them. That's okay. That's all right. Let's take our two inch brush. I think it's still dirty from tapping the, let's see how, we're gonna tap it again. Let me set my paint palette down. Okay, all I'm looking to do is blend some of this ground we just put. Just blending some of it. You decide how much you want to if you keep tapping against the canvas you'll make see all these dark and light areas and the the it, it's it's creating detail with these light and dark areas if you keep tapping the brush you'll make it all one color just like on our, our hill up here if I if we keep tapping you know that highlight color on here it's just going to turn into one solid color so we do a little tapping here, and then we're just gonna lightly, just a whisper, go across. Ooh, you know, I, I know I say it a lot, I'm liking that, but I do, I like that. Let's bring some of these trees that we kind of chopped off the bottoms on them, we'll bring them down a little bit. Just adding in a few more trees. And that ground we just put in is going to show through these trees that are closer. So these trees are going to be a little closer to us. All right, still using that light color. Just tapping sometimes, drawing lines, combination of both. A couple more over here and we're going to move on. Things get darker when they get closer. So by putting in these, these trees that are a little darker, 
and I'm adding a little bit of ground as we go here. A little bit of land. Just taking my liner brush and moving and tapping and up and down because you don't want them all the same height. You don't want them all the same width. So some are going to be skinny and some are going to be a little fatter. And that's what we want. So we've got the bottoms of all these trees. I'm going to come back here behind some of them and just make little zigzags and just zigzagging back and forth and creating some ground okay we're going to grab our two inch brush just a whisper come across just under those trees. Now, if I went through our trees right now, I'd get rid of everything we just put in. So when I'm doing this blending, I'm going underneath the trees, right at the base. And when we put these lighter trees in and I went across, it was at the base. Now we're putting some trees that are a little darker, a little closer, and I just went across at the base and again, very lightly, just a whisper. Okay, we've got our background. That's part one. This will be the end of uh, part one on this painting. We just did our background. Uh, we put a sky, got some clouds, got a rolling hills in the background with some highlights on it and some distant trees. So stay tuned for the next episode. We'll take this to the you know, the next step. We'll put in our middle ground. And then the last video will be the foreground. And uh, I hope you're enjoying this. I'm hope, uh, hoping that I'm explaining it a little, little better that anybody can do this. I, I'm not doing, uh, there's no real magic. The magic happens on, you know, automatically as soon as you put the paintbrush on the, on the canvas. So thank you for spending your time with me. I appreciate each and every one of you. I'll see you on the next episode. Bye-bye.